Ladies and gentlemen, Old Lake has been an interesting release for Intel. I think it's fair to say that while the CPU architecture and CPUs as a product has not been perfect, I do feel that they have been an excellent win for us as customers. Now, I won't get too much into power consumption and performance discussions here because quite honestly, A, they've been done to death and B, this video is already going to be pretty lengthy and let's face it, anyone who watches my content regularly knows that brevity is not one of my strong suits, but it has led to a number of interesting discussions within the industry and has shown that uh, AMD, in the long term anyway, can't just sit back and, you know, enjoy coasting. It does need to continue to push and innovate because, well... Intel are not to be played with in the long term. They are starting to get their crap together, if you will. But the platform itself, as I mentioned earlier, is not perfect. Uh, one of the problems, of course, we've seen is that some games just have not worked because of the whole friend and buddy to everyone DRM. Don't we all love DRM? It's never a problem, apart from all of the times that it is, of course. To Intel's credit, I will say that they have patched a lot of the titles. So I think there's just a couple of games now which do not work. I think one of them is like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which kind of sucks. Not the game sucks. I actually quite like it, personally, but... It does kind of suck that it doesn't work, but Intel have been fairly on top of things here, despite the fact that there are a lot of alarmist headlines out there that makes it seem like 90% of your library simply will not run. The other problem, of course, is that DDR5 memory kits are not exactly the best right now. This is pretty standard when you're adopting a new memory standard. That was a terrible sentence. And naturally, AMD will go through the same thing if they had been first with DDR5, or they're going to be the first with DDR6, who knows. But outside of that, this brings me to the subject of today's video, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about CPUs, specifically what I've been hearing going forward about AMD and how they plan to compete with Intel. This is a couple of very interesting things, uh, but let's springboard from that with Intel's Raptor Lake. So there is actually a benchmark which has popped up. It is, to be clear, quite an early <laughs> engineering sample, but it does show us that we are looking at an increased core count. So this does mean that my information along with several others have been right. Intel will be raising the core counts here. So uh, yeah, we're 24 cores, 32 threads. Raptor Lake, I, I love that name. I just, it conjures images, doesn't it? Like of Jurassic Park type of raptors all running around a lake able to swim or something. Who knows? Anyway, uh, yeah, my brain is being weird today. Sorry, guys. Anyway, we're looking at 24 cores, 32 threads. Again, energy-efficient cores are not uh, capable of supporting hyper-threading. And I, as I just mentioned, this is an early engineering sample, and these processors are going to launch Q4-ish next year. So like this is going to be 9 to 11 months from the time I'm producing this video. It's still going to, however, be on the Socket 1700 processor. Now, I've discussed Raptor Lake a few times previously, and it's not a huge leap in performance. You can think of it more of a refinement of the architecture that Intel have established over with Alder Lake. So it's going to be 10 to 20% IPC or performance gains over Alder Lake, depending on the application. This is, by the way, on a core-for-core -core basis is what I'm hearing. And this is thanks to modest IPC gains and some improvements in clock frequency. So again, we've discussed that quite in depth a couple of times previously, so I just want to quickly glaze over it. So AMD's true next generation processors are Zen 4, as we all know. In the near future, we're going to have Ryzen Vcache launch, aka Ryzen with a crap ton of L3 cache bolted on top like some kind of towering monolith of number crunching power, but AMD have already disclosed much of the details of this chip already. There's a little more for me to say that I haven't said multiple times previously. Uh, basically, you can just take Zen 3, add a huge quantity of L3 cache per CCX. Basically, each uh, cache die is 64 megabytes, and this does in turn bump up performance, about 15% or so in games. That's through AMD's official disclosures. This should allow AMD to retain the performance crown a lot of games and applications from older like, and honestly, it's probably going to do a pretty decent job as well at competing with uh, Raptor Lake when, again, we see these processors launch. But now, I want to discuss with you guys some very interesting and kind of weird things I've been hearing about Zen 4, especially when it comes to core counts. Now, I do want to stress that I'm not as certain about this information as some of the stuff I have put out previously. So I would highly suggest you take this as a, hmm, that's interesting, but 
you know, with a grain of salt. With that said, the sources told me this has been right about several things previously. So, yeah, think of it as an intellectual discussion, if nothing else. So I have been hearing some very weird things concerning the core count and performance targets of Zen 4. Quite some time ago, I actually put out a video stating that AMD would be increasing the core counts of its mainstream platforms, so that of course would be Ryzen. Indeed, I'd heard from a good source that they were quote, confident we'd see a 24 core CPU. If AMD needed it, they could possibly even go more, but 24 cores they were pretty damn certain existed. I backed away from this though, when some of my other sources, including one who had really good ties to AMD, they're actually a partner, I won't give any more information for obvious reasons, told me this is not the case, and they'd only been briefed up to 16 cores for AM5. Basically, yeah, 16 cores, 32 threads, the same as like, let's say the 3950X or the 5950X. There was also, of course, the gigabyte information hack. Um, obviously, I won't be going too much into that in this video because it was a ton of NDA information. I don't think it's too fair to release it. But yeah, it was pretty much the same thing. Um, they had stated that it was up to 16 cores that they had been briefed by AMD about. But the interesting thing about this hack uh, from Gigabyte was that it specifically said that we only saw PCIe Gen 4 for AM5 platform, which, yeah, Zen 4 could support DDR5 memory, also on the AM5 platform, but for Zen 4 server offerings, they would support Gen 5, but desktop was an eh, -eh. Another source had told me that this was also the case. Uh, they told me, and this is the same one that told me that there was only 16 cores, that the reason behind this is because it was basically to do with the signaling of the motherboards and AMD were worried about costs for end users. But of course, this is just not the case. I mean, AMD themselves have literally come out at this point and said, yeah, we're doing PCIe Gen 5, guys. So yeah, those rumors are just completely and utterly bunk. So anyway... Fast forward until, you know, a day or two ago, and now I've been told that AMD does indeed technically have a working 24-core Zen 4 sample within their labs. And to be clear, I mean Ryzen sample. So this is not like a Fred Ripper or anything else. This is for Ryzen. And they've even plans or can create a 32-core. This is the thing. It's not so clear whether they release them or not, but they certainly can release them, allegedly. Now, if you regularly watch my videos and you've seen any of my patent analysis, you'll know that one of my favorite sayings in the world is a patent is a patent. A patent is not necessarily a product. And silicon being bought up or tested is not necessarily the same thing as a product which will actually be released. While I can't verify this specific thing I'm about to say, I do believe it's true given who told me it. And that is that internally, during RDNA's bring-up, AMD had gotten ray tracing running on RDNA 1. Now, to be clear, it never ran correctly, let's say, but yeah, I had been told about this. And again, given the source, I'm pretty sure it was true. I believe this was likely for testing only, it was a test vehicle, and I don't think RDNA 1 had been intended to be released with ray tracing. One of the reasons I'm pretty sure about this is one, my source told me that, and another source also told me when I initially leaked RDNA 2 having ray tracing back in March of 2019, I was told it was like the roadmap for RDNA 2 having ray tracing from the beginning. So it wasn't like, oh shit, this is like slipping to the next release. Oops, sorry about that, guys. I do think that some features were snipped from RDNA 1 to launch, but I'm pretty certain that ray tracing wasn't one of those features. Another compelling piece of evidence, though, for AMD bumping up the core count, and I say evidence with air quotes and a massive asterisk, is that Grayman55, who's been pretty good so far at accuracy, has stated that 16 cores are true for mobile, to be clear. Now, <laughs> there are a lot of questions. The first of which is, by golly gosh, dude, if this is true, I mean, 24 cores, let's say even the 24 cores are true, let alone 32, how would AMD even market this? And that was actually one of the things I'd even been told back in the day, actually thinking about it. This is not part of the script. This is just my brain going, dude, my like galaxy brain mode. I remember actually I'd been told like back then when I'd been told 24 cores was actually a real thing. They weren't sure even how they could market that. 
because they didn't want it necessarily to interfere with Threadripper and they didn't necessarily also want people to be starting to confuse like a uh, you know like the mainstream platforms of a HEDT platform. There have been a couple of interesting developments since then though. One of those is that AMD themselves have confirmed what we've been hearing for quite a long time and that is the well uh, there is a 96 and 128 core server CPU in the works. This is of course for Zen 4. Now, I've also been told that this is coming to Threadripper. I don't think I'm the first one to say this, but either way, yeah, I have been told that uh, for high-performance desktop, we're going to be seeing Zen 4-based Threadrippers go 96 cores almost certainly, and probably 128, which, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see the marketing and pricing of those. I mean, just... I can imagine there's a lot of 3D animators and other folks out there that are actually salivating at the thought of having 128 uh, processor cores, 256 threads available to them. That is just absolutely bonkers. So I wonder if AMD are just going to be bumping the core counts up across the board. It will be very interesting to see if this is true. Again, I'm not 100% certain that it is that they will release higher core counts. And I suspect that if they do, it's going to be after the initial 16 cores launch. We've seen AMD employ this strategy previously, kind of sandbag and then release a higher performance product if necessary. I'm also being told, and this is certainly not new information, various others have covered this previously, that the performance targets for Zen 4 are absolutely ridiculous. I'm hearing from the previous uh, release, we could be seeing up to 25% IPC gains, possibly more with some applications. Again, of course, IPC is always tricky and it does depend on the application, the number of cores being ran and, you know, the angle and the sun of the moon that day, a ton of different things. But it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out. I don't think Intel are boned in the long term or anything like that. You know, when we start to get to new generations of processors, Intel are going to be becoming increasingly competitive. And yeah, you know, someone had told me who has ties with Intel that um, they'd initially been told, you know, that they were going to be going through some pain early on. And this is obviously what we've seen with, for example, Rocket Lake. But they knew that they were going to start to pull out of it by the time they hit the 12th generation, 13th generation, and better still, 14th generation onwards. This is when a lot of the architectural changes are coming. Now, obviously, AMD are also not going to be sitting on their laurels in the long term. And I have some information with Zen 5 and some other bits and pieces that I'm trying to uh let's say do a little bit of verification on and when i get some more information on that i'll probably release it but yeah i'm curious guys like what are your thoughts so far especially if you already have a free uh sorry 500 series board about to say 300 series boards are you considering perhaps just going with ryzen v cache because that's one of the really good things of course of these processors Essentially, they are like a drop-in replacement. You obviously need to do like a BIOS update in most cases. But other than that, it's basically a drop-in replacement. So if, for example, you've got like a 5800 and you want to be like, hmm, well, you know, I, I kind of want additional processor cores, but I also kind of want some more IPC. Eh, might as well wait. Or are you just going to kind of hold fire for Zen 4, especially if you've already got like a good CPU? I think, you know, if you've got something like a 10900K or you've got like a 3950X or whatever, or obviously you're part of this, uh, you know, Zen 3 uh, crowd, it's going to be, I think it's going to be quite hard to wrangle people to jump ship. Like if you've got a 5950X, sure, you can enjoy like 15% extra IPC or sorry, performance or whatever, but it's like, eh, <laughs> I think I'll just wait. And I think that there is a growing incentive at this stage just to kind of wait on upgrading, uh, especially given GPUs. Like, there's going to be an awful lot of cool stuff, of course, coming out of graphics. I'm curious to see what Intel does in the graphics arena, yes, but um, RTX 40 and RDNA 3, of course, are going to be linked next year as well. With that said, I think I've kept you guys long enough. Oh, and let me know what you think of the audio. I'm still going to be tweaking this. I haven't played too much around with the condenser on the mic and some of the audio software, so this is kind of... I wouldn't say out the box settings, but it's like I haven't done too much with the wrapping of the box, if that makes that was like the worst. And you guys get my mean, it's fine. All right, anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.